Hi everyone, Alice Brown, Lady V here. We just got back from a huge four-day event in Greenville, North Carolina, the Greenville Convention Center, yep. and we are getting ready to go over all the details, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, there is a little bit ugly, so join us. Here we go. So we just recently, we just got back, just like uh, two days ago, <laughs> from a huge show in Greenville, North Carolina. I don't know about you, but I still am running low on sleep uh, yeah, from the hours both. that we worked yeah, on it that was, show. That show was incredibly long. Um, it's called the Down East Holiday Show. It was held at the uh, Greenville Convention Center. Convention Center. Um, It was a large show. No, mm -hmm. we knew for, we knew that a couple of years ago, prior to sickness and lockdown and all like that, they had hit uh, twelve thousand. Come to find out, they actually hit thirteen thousand a couple oh, really? of years ago. Yeah, thirteen thousand was their all-time high. Um, so attendance was down dr drastically because they made an announcement to the vendors Sunday morning. Uh, before they opened the doors, that they'd had 7,000 people come in so far. So and, just a little over half. And I would say maybe they might have had another 500 come in Sunday, Sunday. if that. Sunday was a really slow day, so. so um, well, when you're in the South, I think Sundays aren't exactly your best show days anyways. No, never. I don't understand why anybody has uh, shows on Sunday because they really, Sunday, Sunday you just sit there and twiddle your thumbs pretty much. Thankfully, mm -hmm. I took my crochet. <laughs> I had mm -hmm. something to do. So, um, here is a public service announcement to all you crafters out there uh, that are always looking for shows. Don't do this one. Pass this one up. <laughs> Just trust me, pass this one up. Um, although it is a large show, the way they have things set up is they have a main, your, your main auditorium, uh -huh. which is very expensive to get in. Um, and I'm talking... For a 10 by 10 is $520. That is a lot of money. That is a, a lot, of, lot money. of money. And I I overheard several people state that it there was so much to take in. Excuse me, there was so much to take in that it just it felt overwhelming to a lot of people. Uh, there was one or two customers that stopped by our booth who mentioned that they had this was like their second or third day going there because there was just so much they couldn't take it all in in one day. Now, the problem with that is they were charging people to get in. Um, Thursday night was $12, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was, well, Friday and Saturday anyway was $10. I don't know what Sunday was. I'm not sure what Sunday was uh, Sunday either. they may have given a little bit of discount. I don't know. That is a lot of money to get in. And unfortunately, we are living in a society right now that when people have to pay to get in something mm -hmm. like this, they automatically want to know what they can get for free to offset that money. Yes. And I watched numerous, numerous, numerous people throughout the weekend go up to the booth right next to us who was not selling stuff. They were just advertising their company mm -hmm. that was giving stuff out, you know, for free. And just walk right up to them and go, what do you got for free? And I'm like, um, couldn't you be a little bit more polite nice. about that? <laughs> yeah, nice something. Yeah. But that's, that's the world we live in unfortunately. i know one of the things that affected that with people you know instead doing that this time around of course i can't speak for a couple years ago is there was a change in things the last time that they had that show prior to the pandemic was they gave away free wine to a lot of people i'm not sure if that was you know you got free refills if you bought a certain amount or if it was you know your first cups free or whatever the case was but they were not doing that this year they would give you like little tiny, sh um, not they're not shot glasses, but I want to call them that. It's like the medicine cap size bottles mm -hmm. were for cough syrup. They'd give you those with wine in it, but they did not. They were not giving away free wine this year at all. Mm -hmm. Which kind of hurt because anybody that's done these shows know that there there's a very fine line when you're dealing with alcohol in loosening up the purse strings 
and going too far and people get downright mean and ugly when they when they've drank too much so um unfortunately we didn't even get a chance to have them open the purse strings though <laughs> <laughs> so the real problem is, um, you know, like I said, the main auditorium, you're lo you were looking at $520 just to get in. Now, most of your crafters cannot afford that, and no. I am in that boat, okay? Um, so what they did was, is they had what they call overflow rooms. Mm -hmm. And these were rooms in the back. You had to go down a hallway, and then they had one on the left and two on the right. And that's where they put most of us crafters at, because those spaces were smaller mm -hmm. and they were not as expensive um i had a 10 by 6 for 350 dollars. yeah i there were a certain level of crafters in the main auditorium room but it's not a, a different lot. type of craft it's not a lot of your people who actually do the handwork themselves yeah. were in that room your people who did the handwork themselves, the hand beaded jewelry or the hand crocheted stuff, all of those crafters were the ones in the overflow rooms. Mm -hmm. They were not out in the main room. Now, mainly what was out in the uh, main room were your uh, company's reselling products, your uh, Usborne books, your Tupperware, Tupperware, uh, um, Sensi was out there, Sensi, Cutco knives. You know, all those people were out yeah. there in that main room. Um, and those are companies and that can afford those big higher prices exactly yeah. um but the problem with the overflow rooms is is that most people did not even know they existed yeah they, they didn't did do not a do good a good job. job of advertising that whatsoever and that they really would they us. would occasionally come over the loudspeaker and announce that those vendor that us vendors were down that way but there really wasn't any signs they had these like stickers big round stickers on the floor and if you look down that's great you know where you're going but most people do not yeah. look down at all so um just like the horror of, movies you never look down, and you never look up, and you never look behind you. You always look front and side to side. That's why the killer always gets you from above, down below, or behind. <laughs> so out of an approximate 7,500 people, we saw maybe 1,500 come back in the back. Maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that, that's pushing it. That's pushing it. Yeah, we it tried all. to go through and do an mm -hmm. estimate on people who were in the room because the people who stopped at our booth was drastically down and so we had a lot of time to analyze mm -hmm. just the going ons around the room and the rest of the the show yeah um so and the other thing that really killed us is if you're going to look at this show if you're a crafter look at this show if you are local where you don't have to spend the night you might have a chance of, of pulling things out. Unfortunately, we were an hour and a half away. The hours are incredibly long. Really? Um, yeah. They started first thing in the morning, and then they went until... Eight, nine o'clock at yeah. night. I mean, it was just... And I'm fighting uh, fibro flare up. There was no way I could drive back and forth. So we spent the night, and that killed us. I'm going to put because... a disclaimer in here real quick. Uh, yes, I am 27 years old. I do not have a license because I deal with a lot of anxiety. I'm looking to go down that road now that I've overcome a lot of things since I was We're 18. Working. Yeah. Uh, but uh, th that's why Alice is our main driver. Yeah. <laughs> So, but what they did was there was a uh, ECU, the uh, college that's yes. right down the street, had a home game Saturday night. Where was it? For? Yeah, Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday yeah. night, yeah. And so Friday and Saturday, they jacked up the prices of the hotel almost $100 a night. And that killed us. Yeah, that, so, was, that was um, really bad. Yeah, so here, I'm just giving some people some advice uh, if you are looking at you know, setting up this show, know what you're walking into ahead of time because it's not all peaches and creams. And, you know, you, you think 12,000 people, surely you're going to, you know, you can make a booth rental of, you know, $350. One would have thought. Yeah. I mean, we did. Um, we did not cover all of our expenses once no. you started adding the hotel and everything. And we, as near as I can figure, we lost about $100. So, and I have never, ever worked so hard at a show in my life. Yeah, to make I, sales. We really that was did. Really... We, yeah. We we also dealt with the fact that we were they stuck us in a corner and I swear I think we had the worst booth possible as far as location because people would just they would hit the the uh, booth next to us and then they just skip right over us 
And like I said, we were in a corner and it was a pie-shaped corner. So our the beginning of the booth, the front of the booth, was the short. The smallest the point, smallest of, the point of the pie. And then it expanded as you went in the back. Well, So, I mean, we had plenty of room to move around and leave stock up and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know better than trying to set a uh, booth up where you have people trying to walk in because most of the time they won't do it. Uh, people just automatically almost feel like they're invading your private space. And well, then so, for us, that doesn't work because we're more comfortable when we have something to stand behind. Yeah, we're, we're, we are much more comfortable if we've got a table to stand behind and we work better that way. Mm -hmm. So we, they, you know, out of a, what was it, a 10 by 6 space, and then they put this 8-foot table in there, great big 8-foot yeah. table. And so we were trying to make that work, It and it took us a good 30, 45 minutes just to figure out how to set that booth up. It was incredibly difficult. So... Um, this is one show that unfortunately we will not be back, uh, just because the, you know, I mean, to spend four days and all that time and all that energy and not to even fully cover expenses is ridiculous. It really yes. is. So, um, you know, something else that just floored me, um, is, you know, we would try to get people's attention and let them know that we exist because they were just, you know, handing right over us as if we didn't exist at all and so we start handing out bookmarks and uh, business cards and everything I was flabbergasted at how many people looked us dead in the eye and went I don't read ever what <laughs> you don't read and that between that and I don't have time to read yeah. I don't I don't have time to read and I'm like uh-huh how long do you spend on the TV every week sit down and start figuring that out because I guarantee you most of them are glued to the TV at night. Yes. And, you know, even our uh, lovely uh, vendor next to us yes. who did all kinds. It was a knitted or crochet? Crochet. Crochet, okay. Um, she came over to me because they were getting to her, too. Um, she she had heard it for two days, and she came, come, came over to me, and she says, you know, people have time to do what they want to do. And I went, Very oh, yeah, true. I'm well aware of that. And she said, you know, I was a single mother working at the Pentagon, taking care of two kids by myself. Cooking dinner cooking every night. Cooking dinner every night and doing craft shows on the weekend. And she says, I promise you, I had time to read. I made time to read. So and it's just that's part of the, the society we, society live, in today. we live in, unfortunately. Um, that and everybody seemed to be in such a hurry. That was very, very frustrating because you only had a couple of seconds once you grabbed their attention to spit out what you were about. And if one of your key words didn't grab their attention, they would literally just ignore you and keep walking away. And I was like, wow, yeah, that, that tough was, crowd. It was a tough crowd. It's probably the toughest crowd we have had yet. Yeah, I mean, I thought New Jersey was pretty tough when yeah. we did the shows this past summer, but this one kind of rivaled it. Yeah, well, and a lot of people, the the attitudes we got were that of New Jersey, just yeah. I, I not commented very on that friendly. I commented all. on that to my fiance one night when I was re recapping the day, and he just goes, "Ouch, that hurts." And I went, "You know, it's true." <laughs> I mean, you're like one in a million that you're actually a nice person from New Jersey. <laughs> so that kind of recaps the show. Uh, a lot of work, and we are still exhausted. Uh, it was not worth yeah, it. Do, do you yeah. see these under eye bags? <laughs> the concealer is not working. It, it, it was it was not worth it, unfortunately. And now, make no mistake, we did meet some really super yes. nice people. We had some um, amazing interactions. Yes, uh, one I can, of the best ones was Thursday night. Yeah, with the mother and daughter. The mother and yes, daughter. Yes, yes. The mother. There was. We met a mother and a daughter. Uh, the daughter has published her own children's, children's book. book. She is with a publisher and is getting screwed over, just like we've gone through in the past. And so I was able to grab a hold of the mother and try to give her some pointers on how to get out of that situation and take that step to go ahead and self-publish. And we, I had a wonderful conversation with her. Yes. That was a really, really good um, interaction there. And then we met some young people, too. A couple young yeah. couples that were just fantastic to sit down and chat yeah. with and get to and know. Then I think it was on Sunday we had a group of uh, four or five young girls. And two or three of the gr girls were aspiring writers. And mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that, yeah those so were we, really good interactions. Yeah, we really had some, you know, hopefully we made an impact on their lives so. a little bit and, and, you know, steering them in the right direction and, uh, you know, kind of give it a little bit of advice on some of the pitfalls that we ran into that we fell into to hopefully keep them from doing the same thing. Yeah. Somebody asked me not too long ago, um, the, why, you know, why, why give out any information as a published author when somebody comes up and talks to you about it, when there's so much that you can look up on the internet, um, to, to do a quick search, you're going to get a thousand different results on Mm -hmm. how to publish your book. And the reason being is, they all sound good, but not all of them are. And unless you are one to have gone through the pitfalls that we have, you mm-hmm. don't know what you need to look for in a chance of somebody taking taking advantage of you. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. And yeah. so that that's why when I have young aspiring authors come up to me and talk to me and, you know, want, you know ask me questions about that, I don't have a problem giving them information mm-hmm. on what to look for, what to avoid, you know, the companies that I use myself to try and get our books out there. Well, it's not exactly the friendliest of careers. Um, Definitely not. <laughs> there is, you know, we all play nice with one another when we're in front of the public. We have to. We know that. But behind the scenes, there is a lot of backstabbing. There is a lot of ugliness Excuse out me. there that I wish didn't exist, but it does. Um, I think that's just what, you know there was the there was any... one uh, yeah I, I'm not going to name names, but there was another author there this weekend in the exact same room we were in. Never even said hello. Never even tried to introduce them themselves. Nothing. Um, and this person has been published for close to 10 years now. So they should be an established right author. Um, I counted 10 different books on their table. So I know they've got at least 10, you know, uh, books out there published, but um, very cold, just very, very cold. And something else I want to say real quick, and this goes for any crafter out there, but particularly for authors as well. Don't ever feel bad for what you do and what you write. Because I definitely got that feeling this weekend at the show that numerous people, and I will say it also goes for that other author, that did not appreciate the genre we wrote. Just remember, don't be ashamed of what you do. What you do is very important. Be nice, people. Please, please, I beg of you, just be nice. The world needs it. We need it. So, until next time, we will be with you Friday. Join us. Remember, we are authors. All of our links are down below down in below. the description. Yep. Hit uh, that subscribe button and the like button next to it. It really does help this channel out. And yes, it does. us out as well to know that you are listening and love us. So until next time, have a great day.